YouTube, hello, Natalie here with another Photoshop tutorial and today we're going to cover a few skills, some of which involve animating one photo with one hue and saturation adjustment layer, creating an action to replicate that adjustment on that one photo, and this will allow for many photos to be created from that one photo, all of which we'll do within the timeline panel and the cre keyframe animation panel. We'll learn how to apply our own frame interpolation or optical flow to our images for a smooth color animation, smooth transition into the color animation. And then finally, we'll go through two export methods, one to export an animated GIF and one to export an MP4 video and all of this within Photoshop. Here's the image we're going to animate and it's a screenshot from a previous video that I've applied my standard finishing edits to and I have a couple of videos that cover these steps here and I'll link them below if that's something that you might be interested in. But for now I want to work with the final product as one layer. I could merge all of these but I'll just use my standard step which is creating a new layer above and stamping all visible into one layer. So I'll hit Alt Shift Control N for a new layer and Alt Shift Control E to stamp that. And those of you that have been keeping track of my past tutorials are probably so used to me doing this. Okay, so our layer, which I'll rename layer for simplicity and let's delete all the rest. We don't need them anymore. Now, if you're working with your own image that you're importing into Photoshop, using it as it is, be sure to unlock that layer by clicking on that little lock on the right of the layer over there. Now we're going to be working in the timeline panel or timeline window. So navigate to window and select timeline. Down here, if you click this drop down menu, you have the option to select create frame animation or create video timeline. Select create frame animation and there's our frame based on that layer. And before we get started, navigate to this little hamburger menu here and make sure that you do not have the selected or ticked. This over here creates a new layer for each new frame. You do not want that enabled. Okay, so we'll be working with our layers on the right and our frames here below on the left. And we'll make gradual adjustments to the hue on a step-by-step -step basis. And to make this easier on us, so to not need to repeat the steps over and over, we're gonna build an action. In other words, we're gonna record a set of commands. So here's my action button here. And if you don't see it on your workspace, navigate to Windows and select Action. Here are my own actions and we're going to make our own new one. So I'll create an action folder to keep things in order. And within this folder, let's create the new action. Give it a name. And once we hit record, Photoshop is going to record our steps. Hit record and this red button indicates that we're recording our actions. Everything we do in Photoshop now will be recorded. So make sure our layer is selected and selecting our first frame. Let's duplicate this first frame by hitting this button over here and note how that's been recorded. Now, what we do to the frames, let's do to the layers. So drag this layer and duplicate it here at its own duplication button down here, and it's duplicated. And note how that step has also been recorded. Now, we wanna adjust the hue to this new duplicated layer. So making sure it's selected, navigate to image and adjustment and hue saturation. Now, see how we can adjust this up to 180? To keep things consistent and easy, let's keep some order. So let's work in multiples of 180. So I'll select 30 plus 30 and OK. That's been recorded too. And note how our layers are adapting to the changes because it's the layer we've applied to adjustment to, but the frames remain unchanged. And we'll fix that, so don't worry about that. And that's it for the action. And let's end the action there. And there's our recorded action with its steps in our new action folder. Now, making sure the action is selected, we're gonna repeat our steps or repeat our action steps until all hue adjustments are completed. So it goes up to 180, so we've done 30. So let's go 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. And to run full circle, let's go again. That's 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180. And we're back to where we started, the same color scheme away with the action window because we're done with that. Note how the layers reflect the hue adjustments, but the frames don't. We need to get the frames to match our layers. So follow me with patience for this one. Select all frames, click the first one, hold shift, then click the last one to select them all. And now that they're all selected, deselect all the layers except the first. Click the second frame and select layer one and two. Hit the third frame and select layers one, two, three. Hit the fourth frame and select layers one, two, three, and four. Hit the fifth frame and select one, two, three, four, five. Sixth frame, select layers one, two, 
three, four, five, six. Hit the seventh frame. Select layers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hit the eighth frame. Select layers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And getting sick of me yet. Hit the ninth frame. Select layers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hit the tenth frame. And select layers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Almost done. Hit the eleventh frame. Select layers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And hit the twelfth frame. Select layers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Last one, hit the 13th frame and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And now the frames match the layers with the hue adjustments. I'm going to quickly just show you what happens if we don't do this set of steps. So in the next minute or so, we're going to insert frames in between all our frames. And if we don't do what we just did, the frames will come out mostly transparent, as you can see in the screenshots that I've inserted here. So the steps that we just did with the one, two, three, four, all that, they're very important and they're necessary for the next step we're about to do. Right, click through these frames to make sure they all change gradually. If you get repeats, it means you just made a mistake during the layer matching. So just try it again. Hit play here and see how it isn't a smooth color progression. It's jumpy. Oh, and if you find that these are staying on the frame for very long, you can adjust the delay and the frame change. Select all frames. If you don't hold shift while the frames are all selected and you adjust the timing of the delay, it'll only apply to one frame. So hold shift while adjusting the delay. So it applies to all selected frames. Look at the two seconds. That's not what we want. Let's do it again. No delay. Now let's address the smoothness or the lack thereof. We're going to insert new frames between each frame using a process called tweening. Tweening refers to the term in retweening, which is used in traditional animation to add frames between main movements to kind of make them flow nicely. And in digital animation or, or in editing, we know this as frame interpolation and a variant of which a lot of us editors use is called optical flow. That's what we're doing here, sort of. Let's start with adding frames in between frame 13 and 12. Now remember it was 13 and 12. Have them both selected, navigate to tweens animation frames, and I'm gonna add five frames between the selected frames, 13 and 12. Okay, and there we go. Now 12 and 11, same thing. 11 and 10, 10 and nine, nine and eight, eight and seven, seven and six, six and five, five and four, four and three, three and two, two and one. And let's see what this looks like. And yay, that is smoother and I'm happy with that. Now, before exporting the GIF, note that we have 73 frames. Now, this isn't too important for the GIF, but for the video export, it's relevant. And I'll elaborate when we export the video. But first the GIF, navigate to file, export, save for web and select GIF and your preferred GIF settings. If you've updated to the latest Photoshop 2021 version, you probably have to use the export as option as I don't think Save for Web will work for you anymore. And that's the GIF exported. And now the video. Okay, I work in 25 frame per second timelines. A lot of you might work in 24 or 30 frame per second timelines. I work in 25 FPS, so I'll work with those multiples. I have 73 frames, so once 70, five frames for a three second export but our first frame frame one is actually frame zero so i have 75 frame exports i need 76 frames so i want to add three frames to these 73 to give me 76 and you'll see why when we export the video i'm going to go between frame 61 and 60 and insert one tween then the same at two more locations let's do 41 and 40 add one tween and 20 and 21 and add one tween for a total of 76 frames here. Navigate to convert to video timeline down here and there is our timeline. Let's expand this here and play it through a couple times for you. Now, if you wanna go back to frames, you can navigate down here to convert to frame animation, but I don't want that right now. So what we want is to render this out as a video. Navigate right on here to render video and this takes us to our export options. You can name this or choose where to export the file render to. You can select your frame per second export. And as mentioned, I work in a PAL region, so 25 frames per second is what I work in. And remember how we had 76 frames? 
Note how the first frame counts as frame 0, which is why we needed 76 frames, even though the export will be 75 frames. Hit render and that'll export to the directory you assigned the export to. And that's it for today, folks. Some animations, GIF exports, video exports based on one image and a bunch of tweens all in Photoshop. I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope you may have found it useful. Don't forget to keep taking photos, keep making videos. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video.